So we have the Hunter's Blessing, which most Hunters would start with. We have a form of Lifesteal. The Hunters are most likely using Devourer's Gauntlet. We're going to use Bancroft's Talon. We go into Boots. We don't have Attack Speed Boots, but we do have Cooldown Boots. And then we go into the equivalent of Executioner and the equivalent of Quinsai. Trying to make a rotation on this Cthulhu. He's absolutely one shot. We miss. We're able to get him with our three. I think we're going to be able to get this Chonga. Nike's able to clean it up. What a do, skibbity boo, it's your boy Shawnee B Gaming, and today we have a viewer request to play Soul as Aerie. If you are new to the channel, I upload six to seven times a week. I add some commentary to a game that I've already played with the intention of seeing what went right and what went wrong. So if that is something you're interested in, please check out the channel. If you are a returning viewer, Soul is a magic hunter who is great at basic attack damage and stacking up her passive heat. No. This soul video is Good also day. the third from last video in the most recent batch. So that means that a new batch of videos will be starting soon. And if you want to vote on the order of which they are released, please go ahead and join the Discord server if you have not already. So let's go ahead and go over this soul's abilities. Soul's first ability. Well, let's start with soul's passive. Soul's passive is pretty important. Soul is going to gain a mechanic called heat. She gains 1% magical power and 1% attack speed for every 4% heat. So at 100% heat, that's going to be an additional 25% magical power and an additional 25% attack speed. At 100% heat, Soul's basic attacks also gain 20% damage, and the heat is going to decrease over time. So with Soul, her 1 is called Radiance. Soul is going to throw some fire around her on the ground. It's going to damage enemies that walk through it. It's going to heal you for 25% of your missing health over the next 5 seconds, so this ability is a heal. And then it's also going to provide you heat. As you put points into the 1, you're going to get a larger amount of heat. Soul's second ability, she's going to turn her next basic attack into a special basic attack that's going to explode, deal damage outward, and then come back inwards to the center, slowing enemies. So it deals damage twice and applies a slow. Soul's third ability, she's going to turn into a little fireball and wiggle around. She's going to leave a trail of fire behind her and she's not going to be able to be damaged while she is in her corporeal form, I believe that's how you pronounce it. And then Soul's ultimate is Supernova. Soul is going to call down eight fire shots from the sky, dealing damage to enemies. If they get hit by a second one or a third one, after the first hit, it's going to be a 30% reduction in damage. It's also going to provide you 40% heat if you can land it. I find this ability a little hard to confirm all of the damage on. But while we were reviewing her abilities, we ended up getting a kill, getting the first blood, so that is very nice. That's going to be an additional 500 gold in our pocket. So let's go ahead and review the build so far. We are going for the Hunter's Blessing, which is going to provide us some attack speed. And it's going to provide us some basic attack damage in the future once we get it fully stacked. And then we are going to be going into Dancroft's Talent. Dancroft's Talent is just a great lifesteal magic damaging item. It's going to increase your power the weaker you are. So for early game, it just smacks compared to the other lifesteal items. If you had to build one early and only one, I would definitely recommend Bancroft's Talon. But if you were a mage in the middle, Soul Gem is also a viable option. We're not that interested with Soul Gem on Soul quite yet. Bancroft's Talon is going to allow us to heal the most off of our basic attacks and our abilities. And if we can combine that with Typhoon's Fang, we are going to be a life-stealing menace in the endgame. So right here, we have 100% heat, we're starting to lose it. We're looking a little low on mana, not so much the health. So we're getting some basics off. We're gonna throw our one down so the minions walk in it and take some damage, and then we're gonna try to stack our heat. Before we throw our two, or our second ability, we want to try to have the full heat, 100% heat. This will allow us to do additional damage. It's not that you have to 
have 100% heat to use your two, but it is a pretty good strategy if you're trying to maximize your damage. So our purple is up, we're gonna go ahead and rotate back. I don't really have the mana to contest their purple, so we're just gonna hang out and get our farm. So it looks like they got their purple. Gonna get lane pressure. We're holding off on our one. We're gonna back up just a little bit because we saw a Yorm going in. So we throw down our one, probably in a bad position, but it allows us to stack our heat a little bit earlier. We just hit level five. So I am pinging Cthulhu. He'll be like, hey, let's go hit these harpies. So the reason we're hitting these harpies right now is we have nothing to do in lane. Neath just back, Help. so their ability to contest our attempt at the Harpy is way down with just Yorm there. So we are going to have to back here in a second. We do have enough money for boots. I think we are just short of being able to buy Bancroft's Talon. But it looks like we're just going to go for boots anyway. So with Soul, I could see Lifesteal Boots or the Cooldown Boots. I think either kind of makes sense. I am already building Lifesteal, so I could double down or triple down on that. Because I believe I'm also going to be building Typhoon's Fang in the future of this build. Or I can rely on the Lifesteal items that I plan to get. And then get the cooldown boots because I don't really have a plan to address the cooldown. And the boots is just a really cheap way to get the 10% cooldown. If we were to go more ability based, I could see us trying to really go for cooldown. But we are kind of trying to be a hunter. So we don't necessarily need the cooldown. So there goes our Cthulhu. No concerns, it just means I'm going to be able to farm a little bit more effectively in my lane. But it probably means that our mid is going to have issue, especially if Yorm rotates over. Best case scenario for our team is Yorm comes back to dual lane and starts splitting farm with Neath. That would allow me to get all of the farming lane while they're splitting, and I will kind of gain a bit of a lead, which will hopefully allow me to snowball. But it does not look like Yorm came over here. It looks like he went mid, so our mid is probably struggling a little bit. Just gonna finish cleaning up the wave. There's Neath. We're gonna walk up to the wave, throw down our one, try to get a little bit of damage down. Neath is ulting. I don't know if she got it off. I don't think she did. Kind of looked at the minion wave and as she stood up. That is her backflip. We use our ultimate. We get her with one poke. We still have the heat. Oof, not quite enough. Somehow we got targeted by the tower yet again. So we're going to deal serious structure damage whenever we have our heat up. 70 damage to a tower. Like seven minutes in, that's pretty good damage. I don't think most hunters can get that damage off. And at this point in the game, they might be working on Transcendence. They probably have it complete, but they probably don't have it fully stacked. So 53s, but as we slowly gain our heat, it's going to increase quite drastically. And we are able to get the tower. Typically, I do not like to get towers this early in the game, because it I feel like okay. my minions will get pushed towards their tier 2 tower, and then that puts me in a bad position when trying to farm the lane. However, the additional gold bonus is going to be very useful. And Neath wasn't there, so it kind of just made sense. We didn't really have any camps to go for. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, I'm just saying that typically in most situations I prefer to go for camps over towers, especially in the early game if I'm by myself. Not the case here. So for our relic we went Aegis, and I think we went Aegis because we knew our matchup was going to be Neath, and we didn't want Neath to just be able to ult us to secure a kill. 
We will probably want to pick up a beast for the Chaga and Hercules. So I forgot to mention the leveling order. We are going to want to put a point into R1. Then we're going to put a point into R2. Then you have the option of putting a point into your 3 at level 3 or at level 4. But you want to have 2 points into your 2 by level 5. Or by the end of level 4. And then you want to max out your 2, max out your 1. Put points into your ult whenever you can, and then finally max out your three. So we got our Bancroft's Talon online. We are struggling with mana just a little bit, so we're going to pick up two mana pots. Enemy ultimate down. Um, everything okay? Just traveling back to land. We're probably gonna have a wave pushed. An enemy has been slain. Step out of the tower, throw down our one, get the heat going. So because we haven't attacked anything in a few seconds, the heat is starting to dissipate. Now that we've started attacking things, it is going back up. And we went mid, which I find very peculiar because she is missing a lot of farm in this lane but since she is mid we're gonna check their purple it's not here and we know that there is one more wave coming so we're going to tag up this wave and then we have the option of rotating pushing tower backing or looking for camps we are i don't like being around this corner because i feel like they can just come around and pinch me so it looks like i chose to just go for camps we probably could have cut that Neath off in jungle if we waited around and like really thought about it, but I don't think we had that much foresight. And I think just settling for the camps, even though these Harveys do not give you a lot, they do give you some, and that will eventually snowball and give you the lead. So we hit three camps. Unfortunately, we checked their purple right before it was about to respawn, or else we would have taken that too. So, it looks like Neath is missing again. We use our 1 to get our heat going, throw the 2. Enemy missing right. So it looks like... Now I'm going to rotate mid? Yep, here we go. Is ready. On my way. Let's see, is it going to be a rotation that's impactful, or a rotation that's absolutely useless? The, the ladder. Enemy. Okay. Oh, okay. There's some people here for us to fight. Thor's going up. This is going to be a good fight. We use our 1. Thor is able to get the pick. We're going to try to get this Yuan, but I think he's just going to be able to dash away. We miss some basics. We hit him with the slow. We throw down the ultimate. And our Cthulhu was able to get the pick. Now that there's no enemies left in the mid, I'm telling the team, like, hey, we can totally get gold here. Cthulhu and Zeus are rotating over, so I'm going to go ahead and start it. Once Cthulhu is here, I'm going to pass it off to him so I can maintain as much of my health as possible. Doing some good damage, and we are able to secure the first Cold Fury, so we're going to rotate back to our lane. We have a pretty penny in the pocket, and we also have a mana potion so we can sustain and keep in lane if we really want to, and I think that's what we're going to choose to do. We don't have enough for a full item, so we're going to be greedy and try to farm and push this wave. And I think Neath has just given up in this lane, which is a little unfortunate. I didn't think I was beating her that bad. I only got one kill. I don't know. Anyway, we are going to rotate and check their red buff. There's the Neath. Is she gonna fight me? I hope so. Come fight me, Neath. Looks like I'm running away. So, Yorm is in mid. We might be able to get a 2 off on him, but that's really about it. Ooh, a 2 and a basic. Neath is back in right. We're gonna clean up these small harpies just because we're already over here. So it looks like Neath cleaned up the lane, so our minions should be meeting around the middle. Our purple is up, so it looks like we're going to go lane. Neath is here. We're going to see if we can fight her, and we're going to fight her into these minions. There's her backflip. We were able to heal a lot off of the one and our basics from the Bancroft's Talon. 
Trying to tell Cthulhu. She's around the corner. And he's going for the purple. Which is fine, I guess. But Neith rotates in. Trying to clean up these last minions before helping out. Miss basic, so I'm just going to go in and help out. The two lands get some good damage off. Your middle tower has been destroyed. We throw our two off. We throw our ultimate off. We miss both of those things. We're going to throw down our one to heal up a little bit. And since our team is here, we're going to push the tower. That is a Hercules, so this is probably the first time we've used our three all game. We're going to use it to avoid the Hercules and to get out of the tower. Yorm is here. This is not a very good fight for us. I don't have a whole lot of mana. So I tell Cthulhu it's time to retreat. Thor says Neath beads down. So at 17.10 is when Neath will have him again. So that is a pretty cool trick that I don't think I've mentioned. The Aegis and beads on almost every character until they level those up is going to be a three minute timer. So if you know that Neath lost her beads at 14.10, you add three minutes to that, Neath's beads aren't going to be available until 1710. So if you have a ultimate like Jing Ting, or an Ares, or a Pele, and you're concerned about beads, keeping track of who has used them recently and around what time could really help you select your target and confirm kills. Sometimes it requires a little bit more brain power than I'm willing to use while playing Spike, but that's alright. It's just a little tip if you want to try it out. Enemy missing right. We got three minions to clean up. This is an odd game because I feel like we're doing our part of going into the lane, pushing lane, getting farm, rotating when we can. And then their Neath is avoiding lane, trying to not fight me whatsoever. And he's creating this kind of this weird mechanic in the lane. That's Neath's backflip. I don't think we're going to be able to do a whole lot here, though. We do have Zeus around us. They're just playing so evasive. Juan is rotating in. So is Changa. Looks like the team is trying to collapse onto this Hercules. Yorm is going to go ahead and ult in. Chong is probably very close by. An ally has been slain. The Hercules was able to get the Thor. We are going to try to burn this Yorm. There's the Chonga we were worried about. Get through the ultimate. We're going to try to push with him. We get ulted by Chonga. We throw down our ultimate. It hits Chonga, but she's immune. Zeus is able to clean up the kill. Cthulhu is still pushing. We're kind of weak, so we're going to go ahead and back. And if we need to respawn to left, we will. But it looks like Nike is already there. So after going into the cooldown boots, we are going to be going into Demonic Grip. Demonic Grip is the magical version of the Executioner. It's going to increase your attack speed, and as you damage an enemy, it's going to remove magical protections by a certain percent. Stacks up to three Enemy times, and the way these protections are removed is it's removed for your entire team. So that means that if I hit somebody with three basic attacks, assuming that each stack is 12%, I will be removing 36% of their magical protections, not just for myself, but also for Zeus and Cthulhu when they are dealing damage to the enemy. If I were to be build an item like Spear of Desolation with Flat Pen, or even Obsidian Shard with a percentage pen. Those effects only apply to myself, meaning that it does not help Zeus or Cthulhu, Cthulhu out at all, but Demonic Grip will. And since we have three magical people on our team, it's actually a great item that hopefully will synergize with the rest of our team. We, we're going to build this item even if we had four physicals on our team. It's just a really good item for Soul has a lot of important stacks and can really increase your damage output. So right now we're not even concerned about minions. This is the first time I've been able to fight Neath. We're gonna go ahead and throw our ult. And we are able to get the pit. Thor did help a little bit there. 
Your one's rotating in. We're gonna use our three. And that should get us out. So we are going to go ahead and back. And next we are gonna be building the Telkine's Ring. You can't catch me. And this Telkine's Ring is very similar to the Quinslag. It's going to remove a percentage of the enemy's health regardless of their protections. So right now we have items that are very similar to mage builds but they're on the magic tree. So we have the Hunter's Blessing which most hunters would start with. We have a form of life steal. The hunters are most likely using Devourer's Gauntlet. We're going to use Bancroft's Talon. We go into boots. We don't have attack speed boots, but we do have cooldown boots. And then we go into the equivalent of Executioner and the equivalent of Quinsai. Trying to make a rotation on this Cthulhu. He's absolutely one shot. We miss. We're able to get him with our three. I think we're going to be able to get this Chonga. Nike's able to clean it up. So, two people were in my lane, they're probably going to push that tier 1 tower. Yes. Might have been an idea just to back right there. But I think we're going to try to solo Pyromancer. Which I'm pretty sure we can do. Because we do a lot of damage when we have our heat fully stacked. And we also have some heals built in. Plus our lifesteal from our Bancrofts. So the Pyromancer, I've been asked a couple times what the Pyromancer does. It's going to provide your entire team or each person on that team. I forget the exact number, so I'm just going to use 100 as an example. Please don't quote me on it, I think that number is actually wrong. But each team member is going to get 100 gold plus 3 gold per minute that has gone by. So we got the Pyro at roughly 20 minutes. So that base 100 gold plus the 3 times 20. So each player gets about 160 gold. And the Pyromancer, when leaving Fountain, is also going to give you 40% increased movement speed for 15 seconds. So you're going to be able to get you back, back to lane a lot faster. If you look at the little circle or the camp icon. Okay, we're in it. Hold on. Neath backflips out, we're going to use our ultimate, get some good damage off on the hurt, and we're able to clean it up. No concerns. Zeus was even here to help out. But the little jungle camp circle timer below our titan indicates the pyromancer effect. So if we were to back while that was still on the minimap, we would get the effects of pyromancer while leaving fountain. And as soon as it's out, it means that pyromancer is out. Just a great way to see if you still have it or not. So nobody seems to be on this side of the map. Kind of a tendency I've been noticing all game. Their jungler didn't really make any rotations. Their support barely came back. Since it is just... I, I don't know why I didn't push that Phoenix. I guess I didn't want to hang out there and wait for the next wave. That and we had a pretty penny in our pocket. So we are going to go ahead and build Obsidian Shard. This is going to be our kind of catch-all penetration item. Yo, the squad is carrying. Another option, and I think that once you have the Hunter's Blessing, Bancroft's Talon, Boots, Lifesteal, or Cooldown, and then Demonic Grip, those are kind of your core items. Everything else from that is a little bit flexible. So if you wanted to go into Typhoon's Fang right after Demonic Grip, to really increase your life steal, uh, that's a very viable option. In fact, I thought I was doing that this game, but it turns out I'm not. Got this game confused with another one. But we are going to be building Obsidian Shard. Obsidian Shard is going to give us 20% magical penetration, and then every once in a while, or it's on, there's a timer for it, our first damaging ability is going to deal 30% magical penetration. So we got the mid tower, that's going to be some gold for everybody. Looks like Neath is finally about to push our right tier 1 tower. We're going to rotate over, see if we can do anything to stop her. Your right tower is under attack. On my way. Take right 
Your right tower has been she was able to get it, but we might be able to prevent her from backing. Look at this trade. No concerns in the world. Oh, never mind. I definitely should have Aegis that. Is Thor going to be able to clean it up? That's a shame. Lucky play, me. Lucky play. I absolutely should have Aegis that. That was a preventable death. I'm not sure how long I have been holding on to these wards, but I do have a terrible habit of buying wards and never placing them. So, taking a look at their team, who are our priority targets? We would really like to get some damage off onto Neath and Changa. I believe Hercules is their jungle with Cthulhu as solo and Yorm as support. We're going to do decent damage to the support and solo, but if we can try to get Neath, Hercules, and Changa out of the battle first, the fight will probably swing in our favor. So we are going to go get our rematch with Neath. Still a little upset that I didn't Aegis that last ultimate for me. Ooh, she's getting tricky. Thinks she can get Gold Fury on my side of the map. We use our three very aggressively. Zeus is able to confirm the Gold Fury kill and also get in another pick. We get the pick onto Neath. We're going to invade this red buff. Go ahead and pick up their damage. And at this point, like if we, we're a four man stack in mid, they have two people down, we could probably push this Phoenix. Get some damage on Hercules. Cthulhu ult. With Cthulhu ulting, we're going to just run in. We use our one to get a little bit of heal. We're trying to get as many autos off as possible. And we kind of got a little too focused on the Phoenix. I think we are going to get this phoenix, whether I die here or not, so I probably should have played to survive instead of get the maximum amount of damage off on the phoenix. So that was probably a little bit of a misplay. At this point of the game, while playing, I don't think I realized that Hercules was their jungle and was going to be dealing that much damage, but definitely noticed it while watching back. So our team is on a little bit of the retreat. We are going to be up in about 20 seconds. Nice little jump from Nike to avoid the enemy. Cthulhu is going to be on her, but I think she's going to be able to get away, especially if she has her ultimate, which she does not. So if you look at the top left corner, those blue little crystals, that indicates whether your teammate has their ultimate or not. So taking a look at it, Sol, Zeus, and Thor, we all have our ultimates. Nike just got her ultimate. And Cthulhu is more than 75% of getting his ultimate. On my way. So they have a four-man stack. That is a great stun by Thor. We're going to rotate in. We don't have full heat yet, but we're going to throw down our ultimate. We get the pick onto the Yorm. Hercules is here. We get almost the full stacks of heat going. Neath's over to the right. We don't really want to push and let her get behind us, but that's exactly what we're doing. We're going to push, we see the Changa, and we immediately know that's when we need to retreat. We're going to use our 3 to dash out. We just need to reposition, we had the Changa in front of us and the Neath behind us. We're going to throw our 1 down, kind of on this corner, use this corner as a point of contestion. There is a Cthulhu ultimate, and we are able to get out. So that's 4 people down. That fight went really well in our favor. We kind of just had to hang out on the outskirts, getting damage in when we could, but really trying to stay alive. We are pretty squishy, so we gotta try to keep that. We gotta avoid damage, because we have a lot of lifesteal, and we're a little squishy. So if we take damage, we gotta get out of the fight and heal up by doing damage a little bit. We're able to dodge the Hercules, that is a slow. We're going to get some basics off. Doing some decent damage, we just can't land that many basics. Nike is able to get the pick. 
feel like I kind of struggled to get last hits in this game. So Cthulhu is pushing with the wave, but the Titan is already almost dead, so we are just going to push in. And that is that. If you guys enjoyed the video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you feel like you learned anything at all, please check out the channel and subscribe for more. If you ever have a question or want to see a particular god played, reach out to me in the Discord server. Thank you for stopping by. These stats will be posted in just a second. I hope you have a great day. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.